What is that bloody tree? Why it's bloody talons. Konnichiwa y'all and welcome to another 10 at 10. We're the Maple Brothers, Matt and Tim Nichols. I've got a great lineup for you today. This is the 10 at 10. It's a Thursday. We keep bringing those Thursday ones back. It is Thursday, March 14th of 2024. I think we got some good plants for you today. So if you're new, we're MrMaple.com, mail order business. We list 10 new plants at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on our website for you to purchase. There's actually 20. You can sign up for your weekly email to figure out the other ones that we're not talking about on the table today. All right, so these hadn't quite leafed out. We're the Maple Brothers. This doesn't look like a maple. What do we got going on here, Tim? We got a Japanese snowbell called Sleepy. It's a dwarf compact selection, one of the most slow growing of the Styrex japonicus. It's got those snowbells and this is that dense compact habit. All right, so this dwarf weeping Styrax is going to work zones five through nine. So very similar to what you're familiar with with Japanese maples. This one's typically going to get two to three feet tall, two to three feet wide, making a nice compact habit to it. Now, actually why it has sleepy is those flowers give you a big puffy look, kind of like snow clouds, kind of looks like something you could take a little nap on, maybe a nice little pillow. Great candidate for a container garden. Now, this one's going to be highly sought after, guys. Today we are dropping... Acer Palmatum Bloody Talons. Yo, know, Bloody Talons is one of the slowest growing maples out there. This is actually about a five to six year plant on a Welsh pot of Bloody Talons. Really slow, really dense, and it has these leaves that curl downward that look like talons. Really cool plant. This is one, a talon buckholz introduction that we've been wanting to get into the trade for quite a while. Talon actually has the original that's from the late 90s. That tree is only two by two since the 90s. So you can imagine how compact this one is. Think of this one a little bit like Sir Happy. Not as finicky as Sir Happy, but certainly as slow growing. This one is a true dwarf, compact, dense tree. And it's only gonna be two by two, even in a 20 to 30 year span. Absolutely love this one. A few interesting things about Bloody Talons we like to let everybody know. They always get this bulbous place around the graph. That's actually a characteristic of this tree. Uh, doesn't make a weak spot. It's actually a good plant. The original one has that same characteristic to it, but it does make a bulbous graft. Really cool plant. Now, I also want to let everybody know it's going to be a highly sought after one. Now, if we release Nebula for the first time in a seven gallon, they're often $200. These are at the same age range. So we're actually going to be listing Blade Towns today for $200. Uh, we always like to keep our prices as low as possible, but please note these are in that five to seven year age range already. So more about growth and age than it is about <laughs> exclusivity on these. Uh, small compact habit though, Acer Palmatum Bloody Talons. One of Talon Buckholt's last introductions he made, absolutely outstanding plant. One of the most curved plants. Now, one of the reasons this is named Bloody Talons is it can get some pink in the spring fading to green, but what you actually get are these pink red blushes over top of the green. Looks like Talon Claws with some blood on them. Hence the name Bloody Talons. I think this is really perfect. If you've ever read Talon Buckholz's blog, we've actually been going through and doing some of those blogs on the Buckholz YouTube channel. Um, you learn that Talon is no holds bar on many things. He tells people what, how they like it. So it's, he tells it people how he likes it, whether it, he likes it or he doesn't. <laughs> right. And so it's, it's very, it name's very fitting with Bloody Talons. Uh, as one of Talon Buckholz's, you know, last introductions. Bloody Talon's introductions. <laughs> <laughs> awesome plant. Uh, Talon himself said, you're going to have to price this one up if you take my Welsh pots out of the farm. They're older. Consider these like you would a new introduction of a seven or 10 gallon. They've been there a while. Uh, again, five to seven year age range is just on these Welsh pot one gallons. We will put small five to seven year age range on those. Super uh, interesting plant though and highly sought after. Also taking into consideration, we have this one in production, but it may take us a few years to get a big set again, just because of the growth rate. Yeah, it could be two years before we have a much smaller one gallon than these. These have been trimmed back to you. We'll see a flush of growth on this, a little bit larger than normal this year on Bloody Talons because we have trimmed them back for cuttings. Uh, we are, do have this thing in production, like Matt said. It could be a couple of years though until it actually becomes available just because of the slow growth rate of Bloody Talons. Yeah, there's some all stages going up there. We grafted a ton this year. Those will be like five years before they're this size. Guys, let's bring back Biltmore Blue. It's been a minute since Biltmore Blue was actually on MrMaple.com. This is a dense, compact blue, which is broom, Pinus strobus. So it's a, it's a native white pine. 
that was a witch's broom that was found on the Biltmore estate. There was actually a marksman that went and shot the witch's broom out. It was grafted by some of our friends, got into the nursery trade, and uh, you know, the rest is history. Really cool plant. Now the Biltmore house sold a lot of these off. Our friend Richard Bomar actually went and bought one, got it to us so it didn't disappear from the trade a little bit more there. Nice dense habit. There's a big one there at uh, Hillstone Arboretum. So if you've ever toured my uncle's home, there's a really nice one on the bank there. It's probably four by four now with a nice globular shape. I love this one. I don't know if you consider it variegated or blue or whatever you want to call it, but I love all the funkiness going on in there. The colors are intense. I love how long the needles are on it. It makes a really nice habit for that dense round shape to it. Great for a big patio planter or in the conifer garden. You're going to love this compact witch's broom. All right, something new. Another, this one's going to confuse some people. There's going to be some confusion, hopefully not with our shipping crew. <laughs> hopefully not with our shipping crew. This is Acer Seboldianum Firefall. Not to be confused with Acer Palmatum Firefall or Acer Palmatum Falls Fire. Uh, there's so many trees that have the name Fire in the yeah, Which one is it again we have today? This is Seboldianum Firefall. One more time. Acer Seboldianum Firefall. All right, so this is a new Seboldianum introduction. It's got those big round leaves that you're familiar with with Seboldianum. This is not the lace leaf version. You'll love this plant though. Seboldianum's a little bit more cold tolerant, kind of like Shirasodums. They have that zone pushing, especially for those polar vortex years. Really durable plants, exceptional fall colored plants as well. Yeah, I really wish this one had a different name. It was really important often to put different names on plants. This one here though, it's a really nice upright. It's like a gray green uh, Seboldianum. It gives you some really nice fall colors of yellows, oranges, and reds in the fall. Check it out today. First time getting listed on Mr. Maple. Many of these items will sell out fast, just like those bloody talons and firefall. Make sure you check out quickly because our website doesn't hold it for you until you complete that checkout process. How about a bald smith for your collection? These are nice high grafts. They're grafted about this high up. I always like to point that out for people. They'll weep down from there and make a nice graceful habit. Bald smith, one of my favorite pinks in that early spring. This one really brings it. I also love that yellow kind of back color it can get going on. So you get this two-tone contrast even within the one plant. Typically more of a five by five, low cascading umbrella. Again, Japanese maple, so this one's gonna work zones five through nine. This one has excellent color. It's not really your traditional red, it's not really your traditional green. It always puts on new color growth over top of the greener, older growth. And so you get this two-tone effect that's just outrageous. I mean, Bartholomew Smith, who was a bald smith who was bald, really knew what he was doing when he selected this tree. <laughs> There's people out there that repeat everything we say, Tim. That's why I made that joke originally. I just wanted to see who else repeated it, okay? <laughs> Bar small, Bartholomew Smith, the bald smith who was bald. Yeah, he definitely named it. Put it in your video too. <laughs> All right, we got some great conifers coming back to the 10 at 10, y'all. This one is a mouthful, Silver Spitz. Yeah, Cedars Atlantica, so it's a blue atlas cedar. It's got silver blue older growth, but the new growth itself that pushes is variegated. It's like it's spitting silver at you. You're born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You're a silver spitz. <laughs> All right. Awesome plants. Love the cedar stew doors. These push zones. They're heat tolerant. They're durable. They work great in the south. Absolutely love the colors on this one as well. Uh, it, you know, it's an upright tree. Good growth rate to it. But that color can really give you some electric balance going on in your garden. You can kind of compare this to your lace leaves and get some just insane color contrast. One of the things I like about this tree is it's extremely stable in its variegation. But like something like a Redeno Nishki, it's only gonna throw that variegation typically on that new growth. So if you give this tree some pruning in late winter, those new growth flushes during the spring, gonna have variegation all over this. Check them out today, Silver Spitz. All right, we've been bringing so much stuff in out of leaf. Oh my gosh, it's special when you got something blooming here. We got some pink snowflakes. Y'all, this is a rhododendron hybrid that's real popular out at a Buckholtz farm. Had to bring them in because this tree it just has this rounded habit to it, but these blooms are just gorgeous. I mean, this is has really small foliage, excellent tree to do as a bonsai if you're looking for something like that. These Welsh pots, they've got some gorgeous sizes and some gorgeous blooms. Pink Snowflake so aptly fits his name. I love the white blooms with a lot of pink going on. I mean, it is a graceful habit to it. This is a rhododendron, so it goes out there, gives you some contrast with the maples. They're evergreen, so they're gonna have some foliage all winter. Absolutely love what this one does. Ever, uh, Rhododendrons and azaleas, they love a little bit of organic matter in your soil. So a little bit of organic matter, some pine bark really helps go a long way. Absolutely love the blooming content on this one though. Uh, easy to see what this will provide for your landscape, uh, especially when it's doing its thing right now in person. You can just kind of see what it'll do. Like a Japanese maple, give it good drainage. 
and this tree will perform with you with amazing grace and beauty. All right, an all-time classic returning again to Mr. Maple. We've got Karsten's Winter Gold. Yeah, this is a dwarf Pinus Mugo. During the winter months, the yellow gets more intense. It has a nice rounded compact habit, so it fits in a lot of shorter spaces, but gives you that yellow color on an evergreen even during those winter months. Coming soon, we've got our favorite yellow conifers in the Buckholtz Garden video. Be tuned for that. Tim and I and Corbin went out there. We filmed some great content on yellow conifers, some mature sized Carsons in that garden. You're gonna love that video, so stay tuned for that. I think Carsons is one of my favorite Mugos. It's hard to beat this plant. I love Mugos already for how durable they are. I like their tough look to them. I like this one's just overall habit. That short, dense habit to it is excellent. And again, it gives you that golden yellow in the winter months when everything's kind of boring in the garden. You know, when we were out there filming that, that winter yellow video, it was about three or four weeks ago, and the yellow conifers really own that season. That is their season. Every single time you see a Carson's winter golden landscape, it draws the eye in. There's blue conifers that are all around, but those yellows, they're really just, they're that season's premier plant. They do, and I just like them because they give you that year-round interest but they also give you that color vibe that you need to contrast so well with many of your other evergreens. You know, you have your blues, but they're blue year round. You've got your greens, many of those are green year round. You throw in the ones that intensify on that yellow color in the landscape, it just adds that extra pop, gives you the perfection for that garden that you're really looking for. And this short dense habit looks great next to lace leaves. It looks great next to other conifers in a conifer collection. It can go in a big container, you know, think of this one as a short, dense kind of toadstool habit to it as well. So you can get out there in areas where you don't want something that's going to get too tall, block a window. Absolutely love Karsten's. Now, you're definitely going to be giving it at least four to six hours of sun a day for its best, you know, fullness and its best colors. Check out a Karsten's Winter Gold today. Guys, next up, we've got Easter Palmatum Alpine Sunrise. This is a selection by Bob McCafferty as a witch's broom that he found. It's one of the few that that don't have a Catholic name to them that he's introduced in the nursery trade by Alpine Nursery. I mean, really tight, dense, compact, and it has an upright form as well. Hey, if you make your cultivar list, this one's gonna be right at the top, alphabetically. Awesome plant, love witch's brooms. Bob calls them blessings, I get it. They're super cool, and they're a blessing whenever you find one because you get that shorter, denser habit with the same characteristics as a parent plant. So this one is a bold, bold red with some pink reds over top of that. It's not uncommon to get pink red flushes on this one, especially midsummer. Beautiful plant. Another plant too that's a good candidate for a container garden. It's not huge, so you can kind of get some good density going on here to it. And I absolutely love the leaf shape. Oddly enough, this is one of our first trees leafing out here at Mr. Maple. She's just starting to bud out. Gives you some good maroon colors in the early springs, just some cherry reds. The fall colors give you some bright reds to deep maroons as well. All right, what's next? We got some Sukasa, Mikasa, Sukasa. We got Sukasa Silhouette, y'all. This is that classic columnar durable plant from Japan. We've done a video on this one being a street tree in downtown Hendersonville. It's so durable. You can put this one out in many places. A small leaf, upright, and as long as you keep a good central leader growing, a very nice narrow plant. And I do recommend giving this some sunlight. I have seen Sukasa Silhouette in shadier situations where it gets a little more open with a little wider spreading habit. Sunlight will keep this tree nice, tight, and narrow. Uh, we were just digging up some trees in the field and one of the guys that was helping dig was like, man, look at the shape on that tree. And it's Sukasa Silhouette. I mean, it makes that perfect narrow shape out there in the landscape. It's a durable green with an electric red fall color. So you get some amazing fall color, super heat tolerant, but it's a tree that can fit in those smaller spaces in the garden, especially if it's a more heat situation with sunlight. A lot of people talk about what can I put in full sun. Sukasa Silhouette, great candidate for that. This tree's gonna work zones five through nine. In the south, pretty much up to zone eight, you can put this one in high sun exposures. It is super durable, even in somewhere like Atlanta. It's a small leaf green. Now, the, the special thing about this one is the shape. Very narrow habit to it, um, super durable and just all around great plant. Tim touched a little bit on the fall color, but it is a, you know, a flagpole color in the, in the fall. Like you get some extravagant bright reds. I remember seeing this one in the field at Sukasa Nursery in Japan. Now he had slightly pruned his to keep them even more narrow, but man, with a little, just little encouraging, how nice those were. I mean, they were as, as narrow as slender silhouettes with just little encouragement. He was taking out some of the dense, denser branches down low and man, it was a sight to behold, just a whole forest of these there. 
absolutely outstanding plant from Japan. Grab you a Sukasa Silhouette today, especially if you need some vertical interest in the garden. Guys, we're bringing back the Batwing Maple. Usugumo, it's a fan favorite. These sell out quickly as well. This is Acer Pictum, Usugumo, the Batwing Maple. Maybe my favorite still. I love Nagurin Nishiki, but maybe my favorite still the Batwing Maples. It's like my first love for, for Pictums. Like this was the one when I saw this maple, I, I realized I was going to be a fan of Acer Pictums. Like I was like, tell me all about this species. What does it do? I've got to get every one of them there ever is. And it was kind of that first entryway into Acer Pictum for me. I absolutely love the swirling variegation this one gets on the larger batwing style leaves. It's unique. It's vigorous. It's durable. It's heat tolerant. Uh, just everything I want in a colorful maple. I mean, it has that coral pink new growth when it first comes out. And then it starts getting the white swirling in there. And the only way to describe it is dreamy. I mean, you just look at it, you think of clouds, you think of just looking into this and just getting lost in the colors. It's outrageous with that larger Acer Pictum leaf. This is a tree that handles full sun here in Western North Carolina, so it's a fairly heat tolerant tree, even though it has so much white on it. Uh, these trees just make a statement out in the landscape. They, their large foliage gives a very unique texture out there in the garden. And then the color can really brighten up any dark space in the garden as well. Now these are grafted onto Acer truncatums, making them even more durable for the south. Absolutely love this plant. Check it out here today. They do tend to sell out very quickly here on MrMaple.com. Now guys, this is just 10 of the 20. If you want to see the secret other 10, you're going to have to be signed up for our email list. Take care. God bless. And have a great day.